Um, we're looking for a way of planting transplant or seedlings with just minimal soil disturbance, trying to retain a bit more soil structure and increase the microbial content of the soil, obviously so we can cycle more nutrients, more carbon, we can store more water. Came across the two ideas, one of no-till, which I think, yeah, the idea is still being developed a bit, and strip-till, which people are having a fair bit of success with. Um, it pretty much cuts a line in the ground, it's then followed by a deep ripper shank, and then two wavy colders and a basket crumbler roller kind of thing. And it makes a nice little strip, just the width for the transplanter. Yeah, so it leaves all the inter row and either side of that strip untouched, so you still retain that soil structure and don't affect the soil life too much. So, and water retention, having that mulch layer on top of the ground, obviously less evaporation and better water infiltration. In the trials, we had a few issues with uh, just getting the transplants right, but once we resolved them, the yields were higher. The issues we had was that there was a bit too much root biomass left behind, and on the boost of the transplant up, we had a lot of biomass get wrapped around it. That was causing the dirt to drag, and the transplants weren't be getting buried properly. So we just fixed it by putting a straight disc in front of it, just to cut a bit of a line. It saved us a lot of time. I mean, we'd do five passes with just standard tillage, multi-disking and deep ripping, whereas we can get away with two passes, or just a roll and then a, a strip till. The strip tiller, we can pull out eight k's an hour, whereas like the deep ripper, you'd only be going two or three k's an hour. Obviously, you only need 80 horsepower to pull the strip tiller versus the multi-disc and the deep rippers where we're using a 140 horsepower tractor. Touch wood, so far we haven't had any pests or disease. I think snails and slugs are going to be an issue, they could be. We've been warned about them by the blokes over east, so we're basing for them fairly often. And I think rhizoctonia can be a bit of an issue now and then, but we haven't seen any signs of that in any of the trials or during this season. So it's all been pretty beneficial so far.